This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. So just a quick reminder of what it is that we're trying to build. So the functionality that we now need to build, we have our button in place. We need to make sure that it then open and closes the drawer. And then I think we've already added the functionality so that we can close the drawer at a certain dimension. And that was 600 pixels wide. You can see it is closed and it opens up. I think we've already added that. So it's just really going to be concentrating on the button here. And then we take a quick look at some of the transition effects maybe that we can start to include. So, I mean, that's quite snappy, um, the actual transition here. But by default, the transition is a little bit slower. And I wanted it nice and snappy like that. We'll see the difference. This has been obviously edited. So we we'll take a look at the difference between that and the draw that we configure shortly. We have already set out two functions for opening and closing the draw, as well as created a state so that we can track whether the draw should be open or closed, setting true or false. Now this data is going to be going to be needed where through the toggle draw. Now we created a toggle draw here, which is a button. At the moment, it's just a chevron left, which we can press to potentially then open and close the draw. Now this will need access to the state as well as it would need access to the handle draw open and handle draw close. So we're going to need to pass that through our function, our toggle draw here. We're going to need to pass that through, sorry, to this component so it can be utilized. So what we need to do here is just pass this through. So we're going to need to pass through open equals the current state of open. And then we need to pass down the handle draw close equals handle draw close function and then we do the same thing for handle draw open so we'll just uh, pass that down to the component handle draw open there we go right so with that done there's a few potential issues here um okay we'll deal with those shortly right so let's go into okay we don't need a comma there that's part of the issue it's bad habits right so we don't need commas there uh, right so let's go into the toggle draw now that we pass this data through we can now handle it here in our button so first of all we need to set up some props so we know what type of uh, data we're working with or ex what input and output sorry the functions are expecting so let's set up some props so here open what we're expecting here is a boolean so this is just a, a variable if you like. But then we're also working with the handle, the handle draw open. And in addition to that, we're also working with the handle draw closed. So here we're specifying what to expect if you like. So we don't necessarily pass anything in to the function and then nothing is then returned. So void. So we're just specifying what is passed in and then what is the result or the outcome or what's passed back or returned. That's what I'm thinking of, returned from the function, which is nothing at all. So that's the same for both. There we go. Right. So literally just initiating the function, it's performing an action. Right. So with that in place, let's go ahead now and go to the icon button here. Let's um, set out the on click like we've done previously. So on click equals, and then we can specify, for example, open. Now we need to pass our props in. So the function knows um, about open. So let's do that. So toggle draw, and then we can define uh, react.fc, functional component, and then we can say props. Okay. Now at the moment, open isn't accessible because we need to pass it into this function, if you like. So we need to pass in uh, open 
as well as we're going to need access shortly to the handle draw closed and handle draw open. Okay. So if you're not familiar with this, hopefully you're starting to see how we're passing down that data we start here. For example, we've set out the two functions here as well as our state. What we're doing here, we set out the toggle draw and obviously that's being imported, but we're passing in these variables, functions, and then we get to our draw toggle here. So we set out what's expected from our types for those particular variables and variables. And now we inside of this variable, if you like. So we then pass that data through again, and now we can utilize it here. So on click open. Now, what we can do in actual fact is just have one button for open and close. And we can handle that by creating this. So this is going to be handle draw closed. So depending on the state of open will depend on what function we choose. So if the draw is open, then obviously we want to close it. If the draw is closed, this would be false, in which case we obviously want to open it. So handle draw open. Right, so with that in place, uh, let's go ahead now and change this because we want two icons here. We don't want to just work with the chevron left, depending whether the drawer is open or closed, we want to work with different chevrons left and right. So let's specify open. So if open is true, then it's open. The drawer is open, therefore we want to use chevron left icon for sure. And then of course, if the drawer is closed, then we want to show the right icon. So let's bring that in. Chevron right. Okay, so we need to bring in Chevron right. Uh, so let's do that. So what we can now do, specify left and right. Um, I don't need that. There we go. Let's make sure that we import React uh, from React. There we go. It looks like we still got a problem here and that's because we haven't wrapped this up in the curly braces. So we need to make sure we do that. There we go. So we've got some curly braces now around. Handle draw closed. Hmm. Okay, so I forgot the D. So in actual fact, I just want close, not closed. Handle draw close. Okay. Does always help if you spell it correctly, of course, as well. There we go. Still yellow. Okay. Let's declare that. Okay. Because we've not used it properly here. So close. So let's just make sure that's all lined up. And there we go. So this is the button that's going to be handled open and close. We pass down some props. That was the open state, handle draw close and open function so that we can then utilize it here in with this icon button as to show the left chevron, right chevron, whether the drawer is open or closed. Now then, when we click on the button, it should now open and close. There we go. So at the moment you can see it, we need to reduce the actual draw when we close it but we do have a basic setup now so that we can open and close this drawer so here we're going to build two mix-ins now generally a mix-in is a way to reuse code across multiple components mix-ins were commonly used in react before the introduction of hooks and higher order components now a mix-in typically contains behavior that can be shared across different components like i've been suggesting um, so here we're going to create two mixins. So one that we can utilize for, for example, opening a drawer and one to utilize for closing. And potentially this is something you want to reuse across your components. So just an example of that. And it just happens that if you take a look at the material UI examples, it does utilize them. So I just wanted to explain what it is if you were wondering. And of course you can convert this into something that you prefer. So Let's create two mixins. So one, this is going to provide some customizations for when we open up the drawer. So I'm going to just call this open mixin. 
certificates, right? Open mix in. Uh, so let's uh, set this up. Inside of here, we're going to actually, it's, um, I always forget the uh, parentheses there. Right, so inside of here, then we're going to start to configure the transform, start to configure the transition, right? So that needs a, okay, so transition. Right, so we want to start to customize the transition. So theme dot transitions uh, dot create. So we're going to create some different transitions. We're going to apply this to the width. And now we're going to specify some customization. So first, well, two things gen generally want to maybe change easing. So this describes generally the, the speed in which maybe the actual uh, draw starts off as and then maybe the draw kind of slows down as it gets to the end so kind of the speed the delay uh, in which um, the movement occurs and there are different settings here we can apply so transaction transactions we're just going into the default theme here and applying sharp so that should be quite a quick snappy type of opening Right, so then we can set the duration, so how long it takes to get from open to close or close to open and so on. So let's go for theme. Remember, we're just here dealing with opening. So we're specifying the settings for opening. So we can set a duration time if we wanted to here, just a, um, an integer number if we wanted to do that. But we'll just use the entering screen default from the default theme. Right, so we can apply some other settings. Maybe we want to um just to find some overflow so here we're specifying some more kind of css properties here we're defining the fact that if we have got some text and it kind of stretches beyond the size of the draw then we want to just make sure it's hidden it doesn't kind of float on top right so that's the open mixing so i'm just going to copy and paste that and then make that into the close it's called closed mixing okay close mixing or close uh, to make it more consistent right so this time exactly the same thing going on here but this time we want to add a, a new feature which is the fact that when the when the draw is closed we want to make sure that we're using the the width that we specified in our theme which was 70. So that's what we're specifying there. So the draw doesn't fully close. So that's the kind of customization we're making there on the close function. The fact that it only closes to a certain width. And that's what we want to try and achieve. Right, so now we need to apply this to something. Now the current approach, what we've done is we've imported the draw and we've just started to utilize it. What we can do is we can customize it. So let's remove it from here right and then what we can do is we can essentially import the default code for the draw that's probably not the best way of describing it but here we're accessing the draw and then from this we can then apply our own styling so it's just a different way of incorporating components from the material ui library uh, so we essentially import the kind of core code and then we can extend it so here this is for the draw so what we can do now is add our customization. So we create a function called draw. So we keep the same name, so we don't have to change this at all, this component, but we can call it whatever we like here. And then that equals uh, styled. So we're going to basically style uh, MUI draw. Okay, so we're not going to pass anything in there. So we just need to make sure we bring in styled if we haven't already. For some reason, it automatically does that, which is really annoying because uh, that's not what we want. So just get rid of that. And let's add it up here. That's what we need. Right, so from here, um, we're going to need some parentheses. And then again, and then we need to pass in the theme and we need to pass in open. We need a comma there. That's the problem there. Okay, so we're going to pass in that into our function and then let's finish this up. So that and that. And 
Yeah, that should be right. I think I'm missing something here. I'm missing a uh, missing that. So yeah, I think um I think we're there. So I think we just need a separate one there. And there we go. I think we're done now. Okay, so now we can apply the settings. Right. So let's go for width. So we're gonna apply width. Uh, width. Uh, so theme, we know the width because we've already we've already defined it in the primary draw dot width. So that was 240. So that's the width of our draw. So here you can see we're starting to um, create some different customizations here. Essentially, it's just uh, CSS, no wrap. I made a joke about that last time, apologies. So that just makes sure that the text doesn't wrap to the next line. Um, so box sizing. So here we're just specifying how to actually measure the box. So we can do it in many different ways. Here we're going to provide border box. So we're going to measure the box or div from to include the padding and the uh, border and so on. So we could just measure the box from the, the inner of the, on the inner of the box. So not actually measure it plus the padding plus the uh, any. Uh, border that we might want to add. So again, just a little bit of reading as CSS if you want to learn a little bit more about that. So now we need to pr provide our custom options for open and close. So open. Um, so we want to specify now the mix-in. So we want to specify our open mix-in, apply our open mix-in. Um, we want to then set We'll apply the open mix into the uh, CSS. So we need to specify MUN, MUI draw um, and paper. This is where it gets really tricky with uh, Material UI and where the learning curve is, understanding all the dynamics behind the scenes, all the different associations and uh, connections. Opened mix in. Okay, so apply our open mixing uh, settings, comma, good. Don't worry about the red underscore, red wiggly lines at the moment, not a problem. And then we can do the same thing again. So I can just uh, go ahead and copy this again. This time it's going to be for when open is set to false. And this time we want to use the closed mixing. Okay, I think we're there. Right, so now we've applied our new mixins configuration to our new style draw. Remember, we're using this draw now, this style draw. Now, if we go ahead and open and close, you can see the behavior. So we start at 240 pixels wide, goes down to 70. And now, don't worry about fixing this problem for now. When we get to, in the next couple of sections, when we get to working with the data, we iterate over this and just fix this little problem that's occurring here. You can just remove, if you remove overflow X, that would just remove the problem. But like I said, don't worry about it because we're gonna iterate over this later and add some more functionality.